Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Isn't it wonderful, the internet? It could either be used for evangelism and teaching, or it could be used for, well, the two most popular things on the internet are porn and gambling. Not necessarily in that order. I don't know which ones. I, I know those are the two most popular things. I just don't know which order. Uh, probably porn, but then again, you know, gambling, eh. But um, I got a comment from somebody, and I thought I would share it. And uh, it's from uh, the Sacred Cow Tipper. You ever heard of a sacred cow? That's what they are in India. Cows are sacred, so they don't uh, they don't kill them, and uh, they don't eat them. But uh, that's why they get mad at the uh, Muslims because they don't consider the cows sacred. Um, I don't know. Maybe they pray over their steak while they're cutting it up. I don't know. But uh, let me read the whole email, and I quote: "Feel free to share or delete, brother." Well, I felt free to share. And he goes on to say, I believe time is running out for America. No argument from Chaplain Bob. This is Phil's second round across America calling America to repentance. I don't know who Phil is, but... All right, so this is Phil's second round across America calling America to repentance. All right, my note here. Jesus said to repent. John the Baptist, who Jesus said was the greatest of all prophets that were born of women, said to repent. And if you read Revelation, I think, either chapter 2 or 3, Jesus told the believing church to repent. And there's some there that'll tell you that, well, that just means, repentance just means to change your mind, you know, from unbelief to belief. But uh, that doesn't hold water when you realize that Jesus was telling a believing church to repent. What were they telling the believing church to repent of? Their unbelief? No. He was telling them to repent of their works, which is, you know, Jesus said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So, let me keep going here. He says, he writes, so many just want Corona to go away just so they can go back to getting drunk at the bars, partying, sexing it up, and going back to a self-centered lifestyle. Why has pornography increased and drunkenness increased since Corona hit? Good question. What else are people going to do? I mean, you know, you got a choice. You could either study the Bible or, hey, you can get drunk and watch porn. Um, and, uh, in case you don't know it, the Greek word pornea in the, well, the New Testament was written in Greek and the Greek word for sexual uncleanness is the same word as pornea where they get the word, you know, root word for pornography. So, Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. He asked, why are abortion clinics open and yet churches are being forced to shut down or limit how many can go? I rest my case. America is wicked. 50% of Vegas has reopened while churches are limited, if they're even open at all. So much for Corona being truly dangerous. You can go have sex openly with prostitutes and touch gambling machine after gambling machine that thousands of others will touch per day and not spread corona. But going to church where the presence of God should be, unless you go to a dead church in corona, and then corona is going to spread. What's with the double standard? Wow, what do you think? Well, he didn't say that. I said that. Wow, what do you think? 
Uh, let's see. He writes, I called for a national fast three weeks ago and 600 potential people got my request and could have passed it on. I had literally one public response. Yeah, that's, uh, this is my notes. That, that's about right. That's about right, people. He writes, we need to fast, pray, and especially search our hearts and repent of all known sin, compromise, etc. That saddened me to get one response and maybe two messaged me agreeing. I am seeing other pastors now calling for a fast. I don't think this is a coincidence. Bob's note, I was kind of thinking of that myself not too long ago, a few days ago. There was something I said four years ago to, come, uh, to some, some were ministers, and was totally ignored. I'm sure I was mocked behind my back by some people. I know America's problems were not going away. If your focus is on jobs and income and higher income, your heart isn't right. If that was your reason for voting. People, oh, I'm sorry, Jesus must be first, people. He gave his all for us, and we give so little in return. Some will chalk this up as condemnation from the devil, always some people's excuse, while others who already search their hearts will amen, will amen what I am saying privately or publicly. We need to fast, pray, and repent, and not just in America, all around the world. Yeah, like Bob's note, like England and the European Union and uh, Australia, New Zealand, but uh, don't count on it. All right, let me go read um, his stuff. If it is too late and judgment is coming, no matter what, and that is a possibility if you read the Bible, we need to be in prayer, fasting, repenting, and getting to know God like never before. Uh, Matthew 25, verse 1 through 12. Anyhow, and knowing the voice of God, if we're going to have to go through some stuff to get through these last days... So many think they are going to escape just before any bad hits the world. They were wrong, and I believe we are just seeing the beginning. Forced vaccinations are in the talks, and even a vaccination that literally changes your RNA. I don't want anyone touching what God put in me and trying to change it. This is where we are at now, and I am scared to see where we will be in a month or two from now. If anyone will join me in a fast, I will be glad to hear from you. It only takes a couple to start. Many spend so much time on social media a day on senseless things that will pass away and won't pick up and read their Bible, even for 10 minutes. Social media needs fasted probably more than food for some. Anyhow, I hope some would join me. Phil evangelist brother EJ in Atlanta and others who are seeing the writing on the wall and it would be nice to know if this is seen on fake book oh I'm sorry Facebook or did I have it right the first time I'm sorry and it would be nice to know if this is seen on Facebook and I'm not being shadow banned as happens with some comments at times the Bible teaches us that Many are Satan's children who refuse to repent, refuse to forgive, and refuse to grow and walk in holiness. Bob's note here. Well, yeah, they're Satan's children. Uh, he writes, The Bible calls them children of wrath and children of disobedience. They want a utopia on earth without the one who created the earth and gave them the breath of life and all good things, the Lord Jesus. It isn't going to happen but for a few short years, and then their eternal punishment is set and sealed. They still have time to repent, but so many are going to wait until it is too late, like when Pharaoh hardened his heart too long, and they will have no desire to repent or come to Jesus for forgiveness. Uh, Bob's note here. In Romans 1, there comes a time when people's consciences are seared with a hot iron. Just like when you sear a steak. Yeah. Okay, let me continue reading. Um, he writes, The gift is free, but not so you can continue in sin. That is another Jesus. God bless, and I hope some come back to the Lord. 
You prodigals know who you are, and many who have never come to Christ, you need to see the seriousness of this and quit playing games. The mark of the beast is on the horizon. Many won't even know what it is because they are not walking close enough to the Lord. If you don't believe a simple message that I am giving now that Jesus himself gave in his very first sermon, repent and believe the gospel, you won't have a clue when things are finally set up. I've been calling many to repentance for 37 years now. Bob's note, really good. I've only been a believer for a little over 30. Uh, he writes, many in the first 10 years came to Christ when men started uh, when men shared the gospel on the streets, people were open. Many mock now. I noticed the hardening, a hardening of hearts for each decade has passed with those who refused to repent. Bob's note. Yeah, that was prophesied in scripture. Um, let's see. He writes, I have suffered the loss of losing many, many friends over the years for preaching what Jesus preached. I rather lose them now, and they might come to Christ, than for them to curse my name for eternity in hell for not sharing the gospel and not warning them. One of the biggest sins that some of you have is holding back the gospel from friends, family, co-workers, and relatives. Quit being so afraid. Is their friendship and Lord toward uh, friendship and love toward you more important to you than their eternal soul and where they will be? It's time to wake up and get our acts together. We all have something we need to get right. Some of you don't even have a personal relationship with Jesus yet. It's time you do. Whom will you serve today? Personalize it. Remember, Peter walked with God on earth for three and a half years, and he denied Jesus three times in one night. Boy, I can relate to that, people. I can relate to that. That's Bob's note there. He writes, uh, my walk with God is far from that close. Bob's note, I can, I know how that is in my life. So he writes, that passage scares me. When the pressure is on, stuff comes to the surface. People say they love Jesus and don't share him with anybody. Luckily, Peter had time to repent. Once one hardens their heart too much or takes the mark of the beast, it will be too late. Bob's note, all those that are counting 100% on the pre-trib rapture, look out. Look out, people. Warn them, people, best you can. Uh, he writes, I preach hard, people, when I do preach. It's not to hurt, but to heal. A doctor telling a cancer patient he is okay and gives him a lollipop going out the door instead of taking steps to help that person get well is an evil man. I thank God I didn't follow the advice of my high school counselor who wanted me to become a stockbroker and get filthy rich. He knew I had the ability. He was baiting me. I would have been seeking money and materialism my whole life. Many of you are still doing that. All these things will perish sooner or later while we are alive or when we die. Don't put your faith in riches. They cannot save. Neither does putting an offering in the plate at church save jesus wants all of you and me not a small percentage of our lives i lost a third evangelist friend of mine about a week ago in the last three or four years now i know they are with jesus and that is what matters they started their eternity in a blessed one jesus tell tom r carol y and bobby e hello for me and that i love them and will see them soon there are five of us left that i have evangelized much with and had real communion with when you can spend three hours reading the word of god together and lose track of time and enjoy being with each other that much only realizing how much time has passed and having to part because of that time and having to go to work in the morning boy is that fellowship uh let's see Maybe I will be blessed next time and be number four. I want my final days to have mattered. How about you? Please don't take this as condemnation. It is correction for some, including myself. Uh, Bob's note. Uh, I can say the same thing. Amen. He writes, and why I feel the need 
to fast, pray, and repent to. It is rebuke for some, encouragement for some, a wake-up call for others, and a keep going for others who are enduring. All right, he writes, I had to be encouraged by an online brother recently to keep going, to not give up preaching and teaching as I felt it was a waste of time anymore because people's hearts have become so hard. And the vast majority seek those who will tickle their ears. Bob's note, yeah, turn on TBN, CBN, um, 700 Prophets of Baal Club, and uh, your local mega church. 5,000 people. Unbelievable. And, uh, yeah, what can I tell you? All right, he writes, um, well, yeah, and the vast majority seek those who will tickle their ears. I get no hugs for preaching like this, but from other evangelists and a few Bible teachers who are warning online also, those speaking sweet nothings in your ear on TV and radio are too blind to see what is going on or even at this point. So is anyone going to join me this week in seeking God? All right, Bob's thing here. Um, a biblical day was started at, at sunset. So the start of a day was sunset to sunset. Uh, man's day is from midnight to midnight. So, here's the deal. Uh, as far as I know, Friday at sundown is the Sabbath. I don't know about anybody else, but I guess I'm going to go and do a fast. So, f Friday morning, I guess I'll have some toast and coffee, whatever, but, um, uh, I'm not going to have any dinner Friday night and um, till we'll see what happens for at least one day. Um, actually, fasting has some health benefits and it's good to uh, seek the face of the Lord. See if you can find a quiet place. Uh, another thing too, for example, Job and I think King David too. Uh, when they were fasting and praying, uh, they sat in sackcloth, which was very uncomfortable clothing, and ashes, which was, boy, that was a sign of repentance. And, uh, you know, I haven't done that since I first came to the Lord. I remember on the Day of Atonement, sitting in sackcloth and ashes, fasting, praying, I don't know. I felt a lot closer to the Lord back then. Um, so, you know, if anybody wants to uh, think about it, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm not asking anybody to join me, but if you feel led of the Lord, that would be as good a day as any. America's finished, people. And Europe. It's finished. Uh, all of I mean, it's, it's, America's finished. Uh, there's just no turning back. Uh, there's a thing in Jeremiah where Jeremiah was actually told not to pray for the people. Don't pray for them. I'm not going to hear you. Well, that's the Bob, that's the Bob translation. Yeah, he would hear you, but he's not going to listen. May as well. Lord may as well stick his fingers in his ear and go, na 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 I'm not listening, because it's, it's over. Uh, there's, probably, there's probably been 85 million abortions in this country. There's a church of Satan. Uh, I honestly believe that there are more Satanists and witches in this country than there are true Christians. And I'm, I don't mean by a small margin either. It's just unbelievable. And uh, persecution is going to be good. It will wake up the church. You get these mega churches, 5,000 people, and you have a bunch of gunmen go in, and you tell everybody, you know what, I'm going to kill every single one of you people. But if you'll deny Christ and spit on this Bible 
I'll let you walk out that door. I doubt if there would be 10 people in the whole church that wouldn't do that to save their lives. I honestly doubt it. Uh, I would like to think I was wrong, but, you know, uh, God would have spared Sodom for 10 righteous people. And he couldn't find 10. And not even in Lot's own family. His sons-in-law mocked him. Think about it. Are there 10 righteous people in San Francisco, the sodomite capital of the United States? Are there 10 righteous people in L.A., New York City? You know, the only decent church I knew of in uh, New York City was uh, David Wilkerson's. And um, people tell me, what's his name, Colin, Colin, whatever is... Uh, they tell me he's good too, but I don't know. I haven't. I don't listen to much preachers. It isn't that I'm so much better than they are. I'm not. Uh, it's just that I'm so busy doing my own stuff that I just don't have much time to listen to others, you know. But uh, there's just, you know, I didn't want to teach. You know, the, there's just so few out there that I felt like the Lord was trying to push me to get me to do something because, you know, just learning, learning, learning and not sharing it doesn't do any good. I mean, it, I'm not saying it's not good to know things, but um, Bible things, but, uh, you know, the Lord warned that there'd be a famine in the land in the last days. Not just a famine of bread, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And uh, it's just unbelievable. So if anybody wants to join a fast this Friday at sundown, um, you know, feel free. And uh, I don't know what to say, but America's done, people. And so is Europe. But persecution will wake up the remnant church. It will. But uh, the average church people, they, they, they tolerate evil. And that evil is going to come back and bite them in the rear end hard like a pit bull. And they don't even know it yet. God doesn't want his church tolerating evil. Little story. I'm going to make it quick. There was a woman that gave me a Bible. Oh, uh, boy. I think, I think in the late, late, late 60s. And... Um, my mom and dad were friends with them. And she had a husband. You know, she was married. She started to go into church, and her husband didn't want anything to do with it. She ended up divorcing her husband and getting remarried to a guy at the church. And the church pastor, uh, from what I understand, approved. And uh, we moved away shortly after that. And my, I asked my dad, because I found this Bible up in the... Um, storage and i hadn't seen it in you know 20 something years and um maybe even more than that over 20 years and i found it and i found the inscription and i hardly even remembered getting that from her and i asked my dad whatever happened to this couple and he says oh she got religion and she uh divorced divorced her husband and i was like wow you know, I mean, the pastor should have condemned her for, for doing that. But instead, he, I guess he figured, uh, well, you know, I'm going to get uh, more tithes. As soon as we get more people in the church, it's more tithes. Uh, 
and and I can't talk much because my I'm not perfect with the Lord either. But if I was qualified to be a pastor, which I'm not, I would have condemned and rebuked that. I would have told them both to leave my, you know, the church, not my church, but it's the Lord's church. You're just kind of like a pa uh, a past a pastor, the shepherd of the flock, not the great shepherd, just a shepherd. So, all right, well, people, think about it. And, um, but America's done. So is Europe. So is Europe. You know, I was in Germany in the mid 70s. And, uh, uh, you know, when I was a kid, used to read Playboy. Yeah, used to read Playboy. Let's face it, looked at the pictures, right? Oh, yeah, we read Playboy because it's got good articles. Yeah, right. But um, somebody I was renting a, it was like a, I forget, like a room and, um, you know, like a house thing. And uh, one of the guys, it was a bunch of GIs, and one of the guys had a porn magazine. They were from Denmark, was Europe's porn uh, capital. They had a snake coming out of the girls, you know what. And I was unsaved in the army. And I looked at that and that disgusted me. And uh, little did I realize how biblical, what a mocking of biblical that was. I mean, seriously. And that was in the 70s, people. So all the curses of God are upon America and the European Union and the UK and Australia, New Zealand, and all the other formerly Christian-flavored countries. It's just people don't realize, they don't read the Old Testament, so they don't realize the blessings and the curses. But all the curses are here, people. And if you want to know what they are, I'll be glad to show you a video that I did on the blessings and the curses in my 1,000 plus videos that I've done on YouTube. And I don't know how long I'm going to be on YouTube. So like I say, if you want to get my copies of the Bible lessons, let me know. Send me a USB drive or something. My heart's grieved. I can't believe the changes I've seen in my life. I'm in my mid-60s, people. America, I women routinely wore scarves around their heads as a covering when I was a kid. Women wore long skirts in the early 60s, and then it, towards the late 60s, yeah, we had the hippie drug movement, free sex, um, the long hair, the, the whole, and that was the beginning of the, the end. I was a little bit young for the hippie movement. I saw I saw the tail end of it as a kid. But that was the beginning of the end for America. So and drugs uh the root word for that is pharmakia, which is the New Testament Greek word where they get the word pharmacy. And it's what they translated as sorcery and witchcraft. You know, spells and potions. Yeah. America's done, people. All the God's curses are upon us, including the flooding of our land with heathen aliens. So, repent, people. Fast and pray. Save yourselves from this evil and wicked generation. Read Revelation 12. The future of the church is foretold by the woman. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, 
Amen.